guys, how's it going? So today I got for you a special video. I uh, just wanted to explore with you uh, the gentle giants of the freshwater uh, fish that we have uh, in our aquariums, which is, uh, which is safe to have with smaller fish, which is zero aggressive despite being two feet long. Um, so these are based upon my opinions and my own um, fish tank inhabitants, my own fish that I have here. Uh, so yes, maybe it won't be like the best list you'll ever have, but it's just based on my experience and the fish I keep and that are really gentle and don't harm other fish, don't start fights, don't swallow your other fish that are smaller. Except a few. I mean, anything that fits in the mouth can be swallowed, but... <laughs> so, uh, let's get it on with this first list. Uh, actually, today, I wrote down notes, and I will be a proper human being, and I will actually... Um, <laughs> I actually have um, a microphone. Look, look. This time, like... Because a lot of you said um, I need to make videos that are more uh, coordinated or um, scripted or something like that, so... I am scripted, okay? I am scripted today. Um, yeah, as much as I can be without losing the sense of who I am and my uh, very interesting videos. Uh, by the way, I really appreciate uh, all the new subscribers. I really noticed that uh, there's been a high rise in you, so thank you so much for watching my stuff. Uh, if you like my stuff, if you're new, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and um, hit the bell button because sometimes you don't get my latest notifications if you don't watch me often. So if you don't want to miss my latest videos, press on that bell button. Alright guys, so um, should I make that with my face on or should I switch around and show you the fish? I think it's better if I show you the fish, right? Alright, let's flip it over. So the number one is not the number one least aggressive. I have a list of fish that are gentle giants, uh, but it's not least to most or most to least, okay? It's just... The gentle giants of aquariums. So let's uh, begin with uh, the number one um, in that list and it's based on uh, my own personal experience because I had them for um, five months now or four months. We are speaking about the real parrotfish. Uh, these are um, pretty juveniles. They're still uh, approximately four inches. Um, I cannot really pronounce their uh, full name. It's something for, for hypo pistachio. I mean, I'm just gonna write it down. But this is the real parrotfish. You know the ones you see in the pet stores that um, are bright red, funky looking, kind of cartoonish looking. Uh, this is not the one. I'm not sure if they have bred that one from um, this species. This is actually the female, and we have the male. Uh, now, even though these fish reach um, a good 10 to 12 inches, these fish are actually very shy. Um, they like softer pH, warmer temperatures. They're kind of like the discus in a way. Uh, they're very shy, and when they eat, I noticed something really specific. They have a big mouth. They have very strong teeth. But when they eat, they eat small particles. They never go for the big pieces. Uh, I'm not sure if it's only my fish that do that or if it's all of them, but uh, these fish are extremely gentle. Mind you, uh, they have very, very big teeth and sharp teeth, as I said previously, and they can really inflict lethal wounds. So if someone's looking for beef with these guys, they will get the beef and they will get the teeth. And, and they will get damaged. So for as much as they will be peaceful and mind their own business, they can also respond to your aggressive cichlids. So if you put them with big bullies like my Sinspillum, they will stand their ground, but they will always be a bit in the back unless they're the main fish of the tank. Then they will be a little bit more assertive. So that was number one, uh, the pistachio fish I call it. I know it's nothing to do but I have a bit of dyslexia so I call it the pistachio cichlid even though it's the parrot fish. Alright, uh, number two would be one of my favorite fish and probably uh, Joey uh, do-it-yourself king and that would be the uarus. Uh, let me just refocus on this guy. Come on, 
Focus, focus, focus. Focus, focus. Yes, we nearly got it. So uh, the Oaru is also like the parrot cichlid. Um, they will reach a good 13 inches when they're fully grown. They, they get pretty large and massive. Uh, but they're very peaceful, very quiet. They're mostly vegetarians. They like to uh, eat algae of the wood. They'll go a little bit for your wood also. Um, they really enjoy fruits, um, like fresh fruits that fall into the water. That's what they'll go for. Uh, that's another one of mine. I have three, but um, Sweet Pea, which you probably know from my previous videos, is currently hiding. She's the boss of the tank, yet she's super shy. So just like the parrotfish, they have those uh, big front teeth that they use to graze algae and, you know, uh, break into food and plant matter. They can inflict severe wounds, but they're, they rather f do the flight other than the fight. I hope you have good focus on it. I'm trying here. So they get pretty big. They don't attack. I had them with tiny, tiny rosboras, and they never hurt any fish. Uh, if they see a shrimp, probably they'll eat it just because they'll eat it. <laughs> but they will never try to cause any problems by themselves. So that'd be number two. Actually, we have number three right here. That also is a vegetarian cichlid. It's called the Percy cichlid, and it's a part of the Vieja family, if I am correct. I hope I am correct. Um, so these guys get extremely big. Uh, I will insert a photo how big they get. Uh, they get up to 16 inches. If this guy, oh, actually, sorry to break <laughs> the, the thing, but that's Sweet Pea, and she's extremely big. She's about uh, 8 inches now. So she's there, she's hiding, but she's back. All right, thank you for coming back in the frame. I was talking about you. This one, I believe, is a female, so probably will not get as big as the male, but it's a very big, large, um, vegetarian, peaceful cichlid. Amongst the viejas, they're pretty darn aggressive. It's a very peaceful one. It's not like the Simspilum that we saw previously or the Mela... Mela I will write it below. <laughs> they are very aggressive. These two, aggressive. This one, oh my god. Like, it was just like the parrot cichlid. Didn't even want to go and look for food. It was just like, nah, I'll just wait until like it falls next to me. And hence, it's taking its time to get big, but probably will be one of the biggest fish in here. She's, she's really big. She's already uh, 5 inches, 6 inches about. Could you get out? Please get out of the frame. <laughs> So, you, you can see it, she's shy, she's to herself, but she's still a big, massive fish, and they will need like a good 200 gallons to themselves, eventually. I mean, a pair could probably live in a 125 or something, but if you want multiple viejas, go for bigger tanks. All right, amongst the viejas, because I'm, right now I'm in South America, because South America has a few big species that are quite peaceful. Amongst them, we have the Argentea a vieja, which is also part of the vieja family, but not also like you. No, this one is nice. This one is a very nice fish. It uh, gets up to 10 to 13 inches. Uh, if it's a male, bigger. Um, the bigger, the better. I do believe this one's a male. Um, unlike the other viejas that grow quite fast, uh, the Vieja Argentea uh, takes really their time growing. Um, they're kind of equal to a frontosa in the time of growth. They takes up to like three years to have a proper individual. Uh, this one is only a year and a half, I believe. So not, not very old. Uh, they're very quiet. They're mostly vegetarian, but quite omnivorous also. Uh, but if there's like fruit or vegetables falling in, they will go for it. And then there's... Uh, shrimp they'll go for it too but uh make sure the vegetable content is quite high and never is there really um, much aggression for the other viejas i do believe amongst their own species there is territorial breeding but so is every single cichlid so this one gets big peaceful beautiful from central america and yeah keep it uh you'll need a big tank for it 150 gallons at least but as it grew, I mean, 
I always believe that you should get the original size tank for the fish you're getting. Like, grow tanks are good and all, but why buy a tank just to buy another tank later on? Just get them the big tank to begin with. Uh, Alright, since we're still looking at this tank, we'll go to my biggest to be fish. The Hypostomus La Platae. <laughs> that fish, ladies and gentlemen, if he could come back from the back. <laughs> Alright, let me insert a picture of what it should look like uh, when it's fully grown. That fish gets up to 27 inches. Yes, it's a big beast of a fish. Um, it's also purely vegetarian, so it's the giant, enormous uh, version of uh, Ancestress. You know the uh, person most placo? If you could please come back into the frame, I'd really appreciate that. He will eventually, but if you compare that to an Ancestress, it's pretty much the same diet. Um, they're vegetarian, they're great cleaners. You will need a big tank because they grow extremely fast. Um, I'll try to record something <laughs> that showcases him once he's back in the frame. Um, but yeah, they, they're very gentle. They don't take shit from other fish, let me tell you. They will, they will put them back in their place because he had a few fins bit off and everything. And he actually went and told the fish, hey, you don't do that. But they will never attack other fish. They're, they clean your tank all day. They grow really fast though. Um, this one is about six months old and it's already reached seven to eight inches. So it's not because you put them in a smaller tank that they will stop growing. That's bogus. That never really happens. Um, you need a big tank for these guys. But if you have a large uh, cichlid or large fish community tank, get one or two of those hypostomus. They get really nice. They have red on their fins. They have those tiny eyes, mind you. And they have little dots all over them. They're really a good looking fish, let me tell you. So this is part of my list of giant fish. Alright, who else do we have on this list? Ah, let's go to the Geophagus. Geophagus, another extremely, extremely peaceful fish. Now you can put it with babies, you can put it with tiny resboras, with anything you want. Here's the proof. They will never eat babies, okay? You have a platy, hold on, the zoom is coming back. We have platy babies next to geophagus and nothing ever happens. Uh, so any species of geophagus pretty much is all very, very peaceful. I have redhead tapajos. I have, um, which species is that? I have a blank. Um, it's not juropari. This one, it uh, starts with an M. I will insert it right here. Um, so they're extremely peaceful. They're mainly uh, sand sifters, gravel sifters. Uh, geophagus means earth eater. So they eat the earth and not your fish. And they get up to 10, 10 inches about, most geophagus. Some get a little bit bigger, some get a bigger head. But overall 10 inches and see, we can still see there's tiny, tiny babies up here. I know my focus is totally off. But hey, I scripted at least today. We have little babies and we have big geophagus. You see, that's the difference. So if you want a nice fish for a planted aquarium, South American, they don't eat plants, they don't eat baby fish, they don't eat baby shrimps, they, they just go for whatever is in the sand and they keep your substrate always clean. So this is a great fish, ladies and gentlemen, okay? <laughs> all right what else do we have on that list well all right guys i'm not gonna hold up anymore the surprise i got two discus i did it i did it it's been a year i didn't want to do it but i did it they're not the best quality because i was like all right if you guys are gonna die at least i'm not gonna spend all my hard-earned money to see fish die so i got two more discus and to my greatest surprise, they're doing well, and they're eating, and they're pooping, and yeah. So amongst gentle giants, I placed the discus fish. Discus, you always see it with tiny fish, you see it with shrimps, you see it, you know, in planted tanks. Yes, they are fragile. Yes, they need to eat a lot when they're babies. 
but they're also gentle, skittish. Um, so some the disc is uh, depending on the strain, right? They will go and always hide. So that's why people tend to have them in those uh, bare uh, tanks with nothing in it. But um, those seem to have adapted to my greatest surprise. Uh, and this can get up to like 8 inches in circumference. Uh, they need soft water. Or so they say, but some discus are adapted to regular tap water of a pH of 7.6 to even 8. So you're good. You're good. Just stable and clean water is all they need. Um, they don't require like crazy things like always RO water, but it really depends on the strain and if they're wild caught. So these one, I do believe they're just regular um, Thai uh, discus and they're about three inches. So haha, here's my surprise. I was going to make a video just about them, but I kind of messed it up. Oh, and by the way, we have a pregnant Jimno Geophagus behind, but she's always pregnant. So here's another fish on my gentle giant list. Okay, so let's come back to this tank and I'll show you another gentle giant. You recognize this guy? This is a clown loach, part of the loach family. Clown loaches. A uh, loach, uh, one of the biggest of its kind and gets up to, uh, 15, is it 15 inches? I do believe 8 to 15 depending on the species, uh, not the species, but the specimen. And yeah, so they're perfectly suitable for large cichlid tanks. They don't attack though. They like to play dead. They're great for removing snails or snail eggs or any other uh, invertebrate that you don't like. Um, I haven't really seen them attack shrimps that much. They prefer more like mussels or snails. They like parasitic snails mostly. Uh, they usually like to be in a group of six or more. But that guy's a rescue, so he's by himself. And I don't have space for six of them. And he's already five to six inches. So that's chill. We're just going to keep it like that for now. Uh, very, very peaceful. Like, never had any problems. Maybe amongst themselves, sometimes they will quarrel. But never will he attack other fish or smaller fish. No, they're very, very gentle. So yeah, that's another gentle giant. And now my favorite giant of all. Let's go see it. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I diminished the light because it's actually nighttime here. And I want them to have proper nighttime lighting. But I will come closer. So my last gentle giant. And the lighting is really atrocious here. But whatever. Um, this is a frontosa. We have many, many frontosas. These are cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. They're a deep water cichlid. They uh, hunt at night. They're uh, hunters, meaning carnivores. This is Big Mama. Uh, they get up to 15 inches. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 15 inches long. And they like to be uh, by themselves, actually. Hold on. I hope you can see him properly. I'm sorry, the lighting is terrible. That's all I got to show you. It's nighttime and I don't want to stress them. So <laughs> just brace yourself and bear with me. So this is the Frontosas. Uh, one of actually the biggest cichlid in Tanganyika, if I am correct, because the Emperor cichlid is from Malawi. So um, this cichlid really 15 inches. Uh, if you put smaller fish, I guarantee you that they will try to swallow them. If you see fish with damaged gill plates, it's because they were in the mouth of a frontosa. Uh, they will hunt other fish at night or even during the day if they feel hungry. And uh, yeah, but other than that, they're sweet. The only fish that they don't eat is rock dwellers. So Julidochromis uh, transcriptus or um, lullipi or another rock dweller, um, Picardies, daffodils. All these they won't eat, they won't attack, they'll leave them alone. See, there's tiny, tiny babies everywhere. So anything endemic from Tanganyika, um, and that's a rock dweller, they will not attack. But if you start mixing them with Malawis, number one, it stresses them. Secondly, uh, they're just not compatible, according to me. See, they're very, very skittish, by the way. They're one of the biggest, skittish fish you'll ever own. But... 
teach them, to be social with you, and I'm sure everything will be great. All right, on this, let's go back to see my disc is because they're so cool. I thank you so much for watching this video. This was uh, my top giant fish. They're super gentle. And if you have other fish, uh, just write it in the comments. Let me know what are your most gentle fish and what fish you keep with smaller fish and which one you enjoy the most. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye bye.